Did you? Uh, did you listen to John's eyes and see that he was faking it? Yeah. Hi, I'm John, and I realised today cheesecake is a celebration. And I'm John, and I've got a 100% crocodile attack success rate. And I'm not John, and apparently I don't know how to use Twitter. So apologies to all two people that have tweeted at me so far. It is happening. We are gaining traction. So thank you to Abby and thank you to Roxanne. Um, so I understand how to use it now. So when, when you all start tweeting at us even more regularly, I'll know what to do, or at least know how to see them. This is Would John Rather podcast, where we ask two people called John, would they rather questions, and they answer sometimes. Apologies for not being, not having an episode last week. Obviously, John was on holiday. Nothing we could do about it. Very selfish, but did you have a nice holiday, John? It was it was wonderful. I saw killer whales and I kayaked through a pod of dolphins while they were having a feeding frenzy. Did you? And how many crocodiles did you attack if you've got a hundred percent success rate? Oh no, I have a hundred percent success rate avoiding crocodile attacks. Oh, it sounded like you were attacking crocodiles. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, Well, in that case, I've got a 100% success rate on avoiding crocodile attacks. Same here. Well, that was my thing. You can't take it away from me. No, but it's not very interesting. Well, you thought it was. Yeah, until we realised what you meant. (laughs) You imagine get, getting home from work every day. Hi, honey, anything interesting happened? Well, you never guess what. Here's a list of animals that didn't maul me to death today. <laughs> Hashtag fake news. Fake well, news. Well, didn't get attacked by a pangola. Nope. Wasn't a single chameleon that I had a run in with. No di- no disagreements with an emu. What do you think What do you think my wife and I talk about between us getting home and having dinner? Uh, by the looks of things from our Twitter, she all she does is tweet at me. I'm going to guess that you say you're going on holiday, but you're just going to get her back. She keeps trying to escape and you just drag her back. And the reason that you're so happy about avoiding crocodiles is that she's sicking animals and training them to try and defend her. That's why you're so (laughs) proud. No comment. Fair enough. (laughs) To to John's wife, maybe, maybe try narwhals next time. Anyway, should we dive right in? Would you rather, every time you had a good idea, an actual light bulb appeared above your head, or every time that you lost your temper or were angry, steam actually came out of your ears? I would rather have steam come out of my ears when I'm angry, because as somebody who is really pro the environment, uh, I would rather be generating some useful energy rather than be wasting it on excess light and it's really annoying when you 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 go around the house having to turn off lights you know it's just irritating whereas i'm going to power a steam engine when i get really angry so you give be some sort of victorian incredible hulk that's the plan that's the plan how how angry do you plan on being most of the time (laughs) i'll just think about things that get me angry like I was in infl- this a song's inflicted upon me today where uh Justin Derulo and Nicki Minaj were singing a version of an opera song and it was so bad that it made me really angry and steam would have come out of my ears. Seems dangerous. Well, Not- what happens what happens if your wife's like cuddled into you on, on the tube and someone spills their pumpkin spice latte on your on your uh, on your shoes she's gonna get secondary burns on her forehead <laughs> forehead if you're lucky but the pro- if you're talking about dangerous things i mean it could be just as dangerous to get a light bulb above your head if you had a really good idea in an enclosed space and it just glass shattered everywhere and you had bare feet on like if you're in like a small a small bathroom cubicle maybe in the shower you had a good idea everyone has good ideas in the shower Imagine it like smashed against the shower head and then you're just like covered in glass shards and bleeding. And then, you know, the water makes the blood go everywhere. And then somebody comes in and sees like all the blood everywhere and goes, oh, my God, you're covered in blood. <laughs> Were you going for the record or, of how many times you I... could say blood in quick succession there? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. I live, at, I live in an older house. I've got tall ceilings everywhere. I'll be fine. Older houses do not have tall ceilings. Older houses have low ceilings where you bang also, your head all the time. Wouldn't you also say a high ceiling? All right, all right. Sorry. This is the We're John Rather Grammar podcast, installment yeah. number 20. Uh, yeah, sorry, high ceilings. And no, we're talking about a like a 50s style house. We've got tall ceilings That's not downstairs old. and upstairs. That's not old. Not all of us lived in a, like, 1914... So not even right, it's like 1400s cottage. That's and also, it's, it's older than you. Plenty <laughs> older than me. It's exactly. Not old. I was I was talking to the other John. It's older than he is. Well, these things are relative, aren't they? Like lots of things are older than me. Well, yeah, I've got a lot of relatives that are older than me. I don't see why that's relevant. <laughs> so here's a question for you: If I was going to build a house out of dinosaur fossils, would it be a new house or an old house? Because oh, if you carbon dated it, it would be several million years old. <laughs> but according to Landry Street, it's only been there for six months. <laughs> well, it's, an, it's a new house, isn't it? Because it wasn't a house before you built it. That That's is me. a house until you build it. That's like if someone asked your son, how old's your dad? They'd say, oh, well, he's four. Because you weren't a dad before that. Oh. See... With with this little insight we've just had, there'd be a set of about half a dozen light bulbs that you could uh, you could pluck from the sky because when when you have a good idea, they just magically float. Um, so it's not going to fall down on your head. It's not going to smash everywhere because that's the way it works. They they appear out of thin air and they just hold there until either your idea is ruined or like myself, I just take it off from sort of six inches above my head and then store it in a box and then I'd sell them. What sort of uh... What sort of light bulbs are they, John? It depends on your idea. If, you, if you've got like a big idea, it would be one of, the, <laughs> um, one of the 60 watt ones you'd have in your lounge. I mean, are we and, talking uh, LED? Quite... Are, they, are these LED or...? I was just going to say, I'm, I'm quite eco-conscious and I, I do think about ways to, to harvest energy. So I'm assuming that, uh, that my the bulbs above my head are going to be LEDs. And, and are if they I'm gonna thinking be... about how, how I'm going to burn the planet down and make everyone suffer, they're going to be these big old halogen ones that you can actually like get a suntan off of oh okay i like this so if you had like a nice idea say just to to celebrate a friend or you, you go you go and see your partner's parents and you go i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up a bouquet of flowers for for uh for my mother-in-law that's a nice little idea so you'd get a nice little led if you had a big fairy light horror, yeah like a fair if you had a big horrible idea like i'm gonna kill five people tonight based on their religious beliefs, you'd get one of those big old halogen tubes that you used to see people yeah. smashing up in industrial estates, and that would just hover over you. And if you I had like I've a... Like an idea how I'm going to annoy someone, I'm going to get one of those fluorescent tubes that, that like blink and flash. Like a neon like strippers located here light bulb. Yeah, just, just flickers on and off, just annoys everyone. And I could then inflict my idea upon them as well, so that would be like double the trouble. And if someone's annoying you and you get an idea, would it be like one of those bulbs that attracts insects and kills them? Because that would be really yeah. useful on, like, a barbecue. That would you be know, good, that actually. Nine o'clock at night, plenty of mosquitoes and moths and things around bugging everyone. I'd just get an idea of how I could uh, shut next to his dog up. Bing! Bug zapper comes into effect. You said bug zapper. I thought you said dog zapper for a second. I was like, they don't exist. No. No, but saying that next door's only got a beagle, so uh, if yeah. you found a really big bug zapper, it, it could maybe take a beagle strike. I'm not sure. Okay. I think I might turn my uh, power, as it were, into some sort of business idea where I could steam vegetables on the go. <laughs> how often? <laughs> how often is that? This been... is still. <laughs> This is still all dependent on you being angry all the time. Uh, have you ever got so angry with just absolutely everything that you've just given up and gone, fuck it, don't care anymore? No. I have perpetual ability to get angry about things. Like the Hulk. And the, yeah. the, the only thing that calms you down is a nice steamed cauliflower. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean... 
All I'd have to do kidding? is just... No one likes cauliflower. Uh, not John's girlfriend likes cauliflower when he cooks it with cheese, apparently. This is true. Good memory. But, but um, it's the third best cauliflower she's ever had. Second best. Bad memory. <laughs> oh, I'm really angry about that. No, you're not. Here are your, uh, here are your broad beans. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And yeah, I mean, things make me angry all the time. Like when, if you go on public transport and there are those pointless announcements where they just say things for the sake of it. Don't forget your luggage. Oh yeah, I was going to leave it here until you said it. With all passengers on the on the tube, please remind that smoking, vaping, and steaming are not authorised. Thank you. Blum, blum. That sort of thing. Exactly. I mean, oh, you're going to get arrested so on the tube so often with smoke coming out of your ears. It's not People smoke steam. Think, well, how, how do passers by know that? You see a, a mysterious vapor emitting from you. You might be uh, overheating and ready to explode. Well, because the fire, the smoke alarms won't go off. Oh, you might be a terrorist. Well, you might how also you be a terrorist. Go off? Do you know how smoke alarms work? <laughs> No, I've got no idea how smoke alarms work. Are we talking about scattered light beams? Are we talking about ionised beams? Uh, You know, for those of us that do know how smoke alarms work. (laughs) What you need to do, and this is a very simple solution, is steam emits pressure. So you come up with, you would have to invent, it would take a little bit of time, but it's not, you know, Iron Man levels of science. You would form some form of hat that you could do that would have Turn a, into a dynamo or a turbine attached to it. So every time the steam came out, it would spin. It would wind up with the gyroscope, which would then store the power. And then you could charge your phone off of it. It's exactly the same as, I mean, you'll know more than this about this than I do, John, but that's how you keep your battery charged up in a car. You've got whatever they are set up onto the wheels to keep the battery charged. You've got all these giant God. turbines up, sitting off of the coasts of wherever they are. Got Clean energy that comes off of your engine. I I just find it amusing. I I wait till I like, upset John and him start start building up, and then I'd get a, like, a referee's whistle and then jam that in his ear, and because it would hurt and it would be annoying, it would just then <laughs> bam, ninety decibel referee whistle blast, and, and then, then I'd be gets... really even more angry. <laughs> and he'd, be, he'd, really? he'd be known as the human kettle. That'd be his superhero yep. name. I would. I would personally be saving the world from global warming through my renewable angry energy. And giving everyone tinnitus at the same time. Or we could we could just like lock him in a small room with us and just like lock the door and just keep irritating him and he's standing there getting angry and screaming at us and we're just sat there just in towels, just relaxing, enjoying a nice schwitz. Occasionally <laughs> opening the door and saying a word incorrectly so it annoys you. So there's only so many times I can say that Tool are overrated. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I... it's, it's got legs. It's got legs. It has just, got legs. I just doubt your ability to be angry forever. Yeah, and that that's how I'm going to call it, because I don't... He's not an angry person. He can get angry about certain things, but eventually... John, you're smart enough, you know, just to ignore it. I mean, it it took you a few years every time I try and goad you about politics, but you just ignore it and get on with your life because you realise that there's certain things in life you can't control and you can't stop everyone from being idiots. And I think that's probably the thing that makes you angriest the most. That or when your your wife runs away and you have to go and battle an army of beasts to get her back. Or when you go to an all-you-can-eat curry house and they tell you to, to, like, Slow down, yeah. Slow down, come on, come on, come on, mate, come on. And yeah, like eat, light bulbs much easier. Put them in a box, sell them, done. Oh, so it's all got to be Mister Practical now. Yeah. You chose. <laughs> this is true. You did choose. And John, yeah. could, he could, he could just systematically, he could continually drink, which would impact, in fact, his memory, or maybe. Maybe smoke uh, smoke some of the... The devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce, yes. Um, and just keep forgetting. And then every now and then go, oh, what if I sold the light bulbs that keep appearing? And then five minutes later, has the same good idea because he keeps forgetting that he's already had that idea. 
I'd be a one person light bulb factory if I ever got dementia. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's a positive spin on a very not positive ailment. Jesus. But it's yeah, you are correct. I win. One nil. John wins. It's it's cause you you know, you take a few weeks off, you take a holiday and you're just rusty. <laughs> right, with this with this whole hiatus thing, um Whose turn is it to ask a question this week? Because I've got a viewer submission. Well, we're not we're not yeah, there yet. I need to ask you a second question. No, screw that. Let's just skip over your questions. I think our no. questions are better. I think no. you're. Fe- I think you've you're had enough of your tiring voice. Just, John, you ask the question. Are you forgetting who's in charge here? This was my inception. This was my podcast. I invited you on. Have you forgotten your place? I am the gods, the golden gods. You're not even named after you. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah, might be right. The power might be going <laughs> to my head. <laughs> right, just just get on with it, John. You ask the question. Yeah, fine. Right, okay. Fuck the both of you. Let's let's see how you deal with trying <laughs> to argue with me, you pricks. <laughs> oh, if I've got steam right, coming okay. out my ears, I'm gonna cook some vegetables. Grow the fuck <laughs> up. Let's do this properly. Um, You're gonna regret this, both of you. <laughs> Twat. Actually, um, <laughs> <laughs> as right as as John has just pointed to there, I reckon you two should answer this question rather than rather than you, Matt, argue with yourself. I, I want I want both of you two to do it with John Rather. I want you two to. No, no, that's the ex- yeah, exactly. You've 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 had enough of what I'm doing. So you ask me and John a question, then John will ask me and you a question, and you just see how easy it is. You see if you can keep everybody in line. Like I've spent the last nearly half a year trying to do with you two ungrateful knob wankers. <laughs> okay. Um, Come on, question so time, our, cockwaffle. <laughs> right. So our listener submission is: Would you rather always be right or never be wrong? I'd like to never be wrong. Isn't that what you are anyway? Exactly. And I'm quite happy the way I am. Matt wins. Next question. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, I'm, this is about my class. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be correct all the time because then any time you've got like a bad gut feeling about something, then you're going to be correct. And every time you're like a hypochondriac and you're like, oh, I'm going to go to the doctors because I've got a dodgy belly and maybe it's appendicitis. Bing! You've got appendicitis. <laughs> or I think I think that I'm playing this computer game and that enemy's going to sidestep left when I do this attack. Bing! I've won that battle. You just be you'd, there'd be no surprises left. It'd be extremely boring. Whereas never being wrong, well, that's how I live my life anyway. So alternative facts. I, I was I was saying being being right isn't being able to predict the future. Do, do you have a medical degree and know every single symptom of appendicitis? For you no, to be able to know but, that's exactly what you had. But if you came to me and you said, oh, Matt, I'm a bit sweaty and I'm, I've, I've got a limp in my left elbow and I've got ghosts in my blood. And I went, yep, you know what that is? That's type 2 diabetes. Bing! I'm already correct. It would be boring. You have ghosts in your blood? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I think never being wrong would be... Well, I'm losing sight of. Well, Matt's <laughs> just done his thing where he's just argued both points, and he's he's just defaced one, and then God, yeah, the other one's good. I'll I'll have that. Yeah, well, never being wrong would be worse because you would you'd never learn anything. You only learn things by being wrong some of the time. But then, if you're right all the time, are you ever wrong? I think we're going to look at this uh, as an instance of of an argument, not as if you happen to both be on mastermind. So. If, if we're in an argument and we're, we're debating something and one of you goes, oh, um, the sky is blue, and then the other goes, well, actually, you know, it's, it's pink. One of them's not wrong because it can be pink, but the other one is right because uh, the sky appears to be blue. Well, I'm still going to stick with not being wrong because most facts are normally, for, what is it, within seven years, like 40% of facts are proven different or i can't remember it was something they were saying about on qi but 
the idea of something being factually correct is based on science and science adapts its views on its findings. So you could be right, but in 10 years, what was correct wasn't correct. And what you wasn't wrong in saying, what might just be a theory, could be proven to be more correct or less correct in the future while never actually being incorrect. Hmm. I think if I was always if I was always right, I would join a quiz team. And what would you do with your quiz team? Save the world from bad quizzes? Uh, no, I'd win the quizzes. I'd go on game shows. All of the, all of the quizzes. All of them. <laughs> there, are, make... there are there are actually groups of people who are dedicated to going on to quiz shows and cut... get really passionate about them. And they're called with, nerds. For TV shows, like game shows and things like that, you're only allowed to go on... It's something like after you've been on one, you can't go on another one for like two, three years. So you can apply all you want, which you get a lot of people that apply to them like religiously. But you you have to be careful which ones you accept because if you get offered one and the grand prize is like five grand and then you just happen to get accepted onto one six months later and it's who wants to be a millionaire, you bug it because you can't do it. Well, the you know there was that big scandal where the guy was said to they thought he cheated to get a million pounds. Well, his wife had already been on it, and so had his friend because they were quiz fanatics and they figured out quiet times to get through on the phones or something. Mm. I don't know how it worked, but that was a the thing. They were fanatics about it, and they all got on it. And he he was always right. And he won a million, but then they called him a cheater. I don't know. Well, I think, and I mean, right, this is this is difficult for me to break down to to be a, a pawn in somebody else's game for once. But John, I think this is the perfect question to start it with because you've asked the question, and the two people that have picked their answers, you've got John, who always thinks he's correct, and me, who I never think I'm wrong. So, basically, who's more bearable to have around, I would judge your argument on. Well, the other other thing is, if if you were literally never wrong, then you can never be humble and go, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And then you'll never make up with anything. The thing is, John, when when you're wrong, you say it sarcastically, oh, sorry, I was wrong, and then you move on. It's like, hang on a minute, that's not action apology. (laughs) That's you saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you can't tolerate me anymore, but I'm right. I've I've never heard John admit that he's wrong. He says sorry like Chandler says sorry. Like on the, on like the three times he did that is safe. Like, oh. we don't, like he's on a different plane of existence to us and we just don't understand. And it's our fault. That yeah. We don't get it. Yeah, so okay, so <laughs> so you're saying so so you're saying this is a a a, ba- a negative trait that you don't like about me. Well, it's not going to be resolved by me never Call, being wrong, is it? Calling you out in a public <laughs> forum available for billions of people to listen to. <laughs> no, the point is, if you now give me the ability to never be wrong, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! This is, they should uh, they should they should do this as therapy. Uh, uh, do you know the best well, bit is I, I'm I, I fallen out with my friends. Maybe record a podcast and see how that goes. <laughs> oh, he's not wrong. Uh, oh, see, no, no. See, so John, he, how, he is right. how easy is it? How <laughs> how easy is it keeping us in line? You've just broken down a decade-long friendship. <laughs> oh man. Um I I don't know who the winner is. Not as easy as right. it looks, is it? No, it's no it's not, because I I didn't have <laughs> which one I picked already in the bag. A preconception. <laughs> also you picked you picked two things which you know, they're they're like two sides of the same coin, aren't they? You know. <laughs> which you two are. Ta- <laughs> <Tales> <laughs> is, <laughs> so right. Tails isn't heads, but heads couldn't exist without tails. This is very true. Um, oh God! Uh, right, I need I need a closing argument. I need I need a good solid paragraph from each of you. Or maybe, maybe just flip flip a coin. Is it heads? 
guess it is because I'm always right. I mean, the important thing that we've learned from this, John, is every time that I've awarded you the win, John's disagreed but kept it in his head because he knows he's right anyway. So in his mind, he's never lost. So there's no there's no victim announcing me the winner, the same as there was no victim announcing you the winner in the past. I'm not wrong. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go with, with not wrong because it just makes everything that little bit more interesting because you do get other people's views. Um, this is why I said you would regret it. <laughs> and you have to agree with them sometimes and respect them for, for what they believe, whereas other times when people are right, sometimes you just don't want to hear it. So, yeah. Sorry, John. I've... I've I've, I've tarnished the, uh, the the John winning and that's an hour one then. Wow. So up until now, 19 episodes, John won every single episode. <laughs> and now, not John has won. Mark this date in your calendars, 30th of August at exactly 9pm and the downfall of John begins. <laughs> it's fine. If, if this podcast goes around the toilet bowl, it's, <laughs> it's all three of us that lose out. <laughs> oh, I, anyway, I have... Can I have you, to say. Can you guess who sent in that submission? Um. It was your brother. Oh. How good was that? Yeah. I really liked it. As soon as I saw the question, I was like, "Yes, that has to be featured." It's it's like he knew as well that you were going to ask the question to me and John because it. I don't think that question would have worked as well had it been any other combination. Exactly. Ah, oh, that's maybe, worked well. Maybe not John's brother is never wrong maybe he's the real mastermind behind this show maybe he's the past <laughs> master I think he is because I, I secretly wish my puns were half as good as his oh god yes yeah I had a conversation with him after our conversation a few episodes back where John admitted that he plans his puns and he went it's not a pun if you plan it that's a routine <laughs> <laughs> spot on spot on yep I have to say, I I enjoyed being in the ring. Yeah, well, why don't you be in the ring again? And I'll ask a question this time. Okay. We've tried it the other way. Uh, so before before we do that, should we keep at least uh, keep to some sort of format? And uh, we haven't said to anybody about our twitters or anything like that. We're we're would John rather the parentheses in the middle of the name are not helpful for finding us, and we should have thought about that before we started, but in for a penny, in for a pound. And we're on Spotify, Stitcher, what else are we on? iTunes, our own website. Just just find us on Spotify. Everyone uses that. It's much easier. Pretty much. And if you want to uh, contact us directly and, and basically, basically ruin our friendship and send us loaded questions to ask each other, I am at... John would rather, that's J-O-N, no H's, as uh, we are extra value, and we don't need them. And uh, if you want a full fat John, <laughs> then... Is it smoke tweet. signals this week? <laughs> I, I was going to say, uh, find, message me through the tea leaves. From the great beyond. <laughs> yeah. Die, and then contact him from the, from, from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, through tea leaves. Is that, is oh, that mate, what... If you don't get your tea leaves out tomorrow and you leave it six months, someone's going to feel very stupid. They just killed themselves. <laughs> just being on hold in purgatory for six months. Oh, I don't even stupid. drink. I don't even drink tea. <laughs> Brutal. Let, let alone fresh. <laughs> let alone using tea leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, would Jay rather for me if? Uh, well, apparently it's it's just a possibility. What? Just use Twitter. I, I am. Oh, you're uh, talking oh, about him. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Just... yeah. Contact, contact <laughs> full, full Fat John through Twitter. Please. We, we don't want anyone's lives hanging on their conscience. <laughs> okay. So now we've got that out of the way. Uh, I would like to ask you two a question that's very close to my heart. Is it about your lungs? Not that close. Not that close. No. Uh, Is it shrapnel? Are you Iron Man? (laughs) I've got shrapnel. (laughs) Would you rather climb a mountain or explore a cave? Explore a cave. Climb a mountain. 
Climb a mountain. Explore a cave. You, you know it's going to have his work. You know I do not like small spaces. You know that I don't like confined spaces. And you know that I've climbed mountains before. Out of choice. John, okay, well, John it was a the, hill. It was a hill. It was a mountain. It was a hill. It was Cairngorm. There's a lot of mountain in the second largest mountain range in Scotland. Mountain range is the sort of the clue is in the title. Mm. Uh, can, no, anyway, uh, you go down. Can, you go down your hole and have fun. I can. I can adjudicate this. Uh, the Cairngorm is a mountain. Uh, now, I, I just want to preface this with I'm actually very, very torn on this, and uh, I genuinely love doing both. So I'm really interested to see how you're going to battle this out to win, because if you start slagging the other one off, it might actually harm your case more than it will help it. So let's see how it goes. Well, it's, it's, it's very simple. I don't need to slag off mountains. I've got nothing against mountains. I will say, and I know that I'm wrong, but my initial reaction for calling it a hill was I thought it had to have snow on top to be a mountain. And that is something Dude. that I... OK, it was obviously snowing that day. but. Um, it's it's very simple because I've got not not no problem with mountains or hills or volcanoes, but you live in London, and the idea for the London Underground, which is how you get from A to B, would have been inspired by caves. Okay, caves caves are an inspiration to us all. In fact, no, not even inspiration. It is a cave. It's not a natural cave. It's a man-made cave, but it is a cave. Okay, it's it's not the cave that would spring to mind immediately if i was looking to explore somewhere but yeah I, I i take your point when's the last time you took a mountain to work <laughs> when's the last time you took a, uh, took a car? <laughs> i was gonna say took a cave to work but as in like you went caving on your way to work mm, I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of you know the great escape that was a tunnel uh same thing the tube the tube is a tunnel mm. tunnel is just a fancy cave though isn't it just like mountains, just a fancy hill. <laughs> no, no, a mountain is like a really large hill. And, and a volcano is just a flamboyant mountain. <laughs> it's an angry mountain. <laughs> okay, um, let's look at this in a, in a different perspective. If we're going to look at the, the grandeur of mountains, um, they happen to name a character in the Game of Thrones after mountains. He's a pretty, pretty extreme and brutal guy. And he's huge. I wouldn't really want to meet the guy that was named after a cave. I can imagine him being slightly damp all the time. Like possibly <laughs> Cave Johnson from Portal 2. Oh. But you, you couldn't hear me, but not... I dropped the microphone. Can you give me a Cave Johnson quote? Oh, I was going to give you the Cave Johnson quote. <laughs> no, I'm not. You've got it written on your wall. I have. I've got a canvas print of a Cave Johnson quote. Don't you know who I am? I'm going to burn your house down. With the lemons. With lemons. All right, okay. So, uh, what, so what, was, what, was one of the, what was one of the mountain's famous quotes? <laughs> uh, I, I believe it was, I raped your sister. Or paraphrase, some, something to that effect. Something very friendly and welcoming. <laughs> but, <laughs> if, we're talking, if we're talking about mountains versus cave, I think the reason why, you know, apart from the fact I, I don't like confined spaces... I think what gives me the biggest sense of achievement of mountain climbing is standing at the top and looking at the vista in front of you. Um, when I climbed Cairngorms, it was bloody bleak. It was so snowy and desolate, and I couldn't see anything. Uh, but actually, at the top of the mountain, um, from where the snow was blowing the sides, there was uh, big ice formations across the side of the weather station that was really interesting. It just you wouldn't see anywhere else because it's such an extreme climate. Um, but I climbed Ben Vraki most recently and when I got to the top of there um, past the snow there was snow at Ben Vraki when I got to the top there was just a stunning stunning mountain range in front of me it was really really nice and in the very far distance because it was such a clear day we could see the edge of the um, the range where Ben Nevis was it was just yeah, absolutely breathtaking That's, you, you get a real sense of achievement it is hard work it's miserable when you get to so many hundred meters and you're just sweating but it's so cold so you need to keep wrapped wrapped up keep warm and you just climb an endless set of stairs and when you think you've got the top you haven't because you turn the corner and there's even more hill to climb a false Uh, summit false summit yeah but when you get to the top you know you're there and you do feel a real sense of accomplishment 
you are you are pulling on the heartstrings. But the thing is with caving is when you get to the opposite of the summit, and I mean rock bottom, there's only one direction to go, isn't there? The hard way, up. Up. <laughs> Whereas if you reach the summit, what all happens there, John? It's all downhill from there. Which is easier on the legs. You've, you've put the hard work in, you've soaked up the atmosphere, it's brilliant, and then you know you're not going to end up dying on the way down because it's, it's an easier trek back to the car. Plus, on the idea of climbing mountains, don't get me wrong, there's, you know, I'd love to have the patience to go on a hard walk up to the top of a mountain, but it's, I like, I like I've been to, not mountains, but hills, I guess, to the top, and it, there is something about it, but I saw a quote the other day, and it was, um, every frozen body that's on the Everest started out as an extremely motivated person. <laughs> okay. Just... I don't, I don't know whether that's going in or against my favour, but I just read it and went, huh, okay. There's um, there's a route card actually up Everest. Um, from one of the landmarks is turn left at Green Boots. You think, well, <laughs> a rock, a rock the shape of Green Boots is a bit weird. No, it's it's unfortunately a, a hiker from the early 90s who wore very, very green boots and he decided to go for a kit under a rock for some shelter and he's just there on the trail. He hasn't moved. He's frozen, bless him. So he's actually become a landmark. So I, I do see where you're coming from. Um, but most recently, we, we had what a, a bus full of Thai kids get stuck in the caves for a week or two. That's terrifying. That is genuinely, genuinely terrifying. I couldn't think of anything worse than being trapped in a cave. Did they get out? After a military effort, yes. No harm, no foul. There was that one. What well, doesn't that one kill you makes you stronger. You know, I've I've heard some I've if heard some pos- caves didn't exist, then all of the canaries that used to have jobs for mining <laughs> wouldn't have had jobs. And they could be free to not be gassed. No, but they were clearly bred for it, so they wouldn't have existed in the first place. So by calling against canaries having jobs and saying that they could be freed is like saying that all of the animals that we kill and devour each week could be freed and left to be live happy lives. So by agreeing with mountains, you're agreeing with vegetarianism. No, but agreeing, <laughs> agreeing with mountains means you get Swiss mountain dogs, you get Bernese mountain dogs, you get St. Bernard's, all dogs which are absolutely fantastic, which were bred to help people in mountainous conditions. And mm. think, of those really cool, think of those really cool railways that are built with tracks with cogs so they can get to the top, so you can have a, a latte with a really good view. And um, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, this, could be, <laughs> this could be the decider. If you didn't have mountains, you wouldn't have um, thermals that create clouds driven up, then rained in the mountains. The water runs down the mountain quite happily, and then it's collected by some Scottish bloke who puts it into a distillery, and then you get fine scotch from mountain <laughs> water. See, so you almost lost me there at dogs. I started to think, oh, is that all I get? But then you, you said whiskey. Oh, whiskey's good. And you I was do get say mountain goats, but I think mountain goats were like there anyway. Yeah, but yeah, and you do get a lot of whiskey in Scotland where there are a lot of mountains. That is true. I'm not. I'm not sure. I want to drink cave whiskey. Have you ever tried cave whiskey? No, I, I just imagine it being like quite heavy and. And like, how do you got a lot, a lot, of, a lot of heavy metals in it? Washed down. How do you think a lot of this water gets to the to the springs and the babbling brooks that they get the water from? Probably from it the runs, uh, off, runs off runs off from farmers' fields with pesticides. Probably through caving systems, but that's just, that's just one man's opinion. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm gonna call it there, and but with a condition that I'm gonna give it to mountains because you did pull on my heartstrings with the the sense of the accomplishments and the the vistas and then the whiskey. The, but, the accomplishments and the whiskey for the ones that fucking survive. Yeah. yeah, screw the dead. Who gives a shit about them, eh, John? I was what I was gonna say was that the uh the the uh if you can distill a whiskey in a cave and bring it to me in a minimum of seven years, because that's the youngest a whiskey can be in a cave and then bring it to me, I may reconsider this decision. Posthumously. 
posthumously. No, no, Are you planning on dying no in pressure. seven years? <laughs> yeah, in either a cave or on a mountain. I haven't decided which, because you pointed out that people die on both. Because we're cheery like that. <laughs> yeah, so Matt, no pressure, but you need to find some cave water, um, malt it, distill it, and put it in a nice, decent barrel tonight. Just so John could... <laughs> Just so John can award you a victory seven years from now. He might just do it. He's he's quite stubborn. I have got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just Google cave you know, it systems was, it was a tough in one Liverpool. <laughs> oh, I've just got a uh, a tweet from the Chilean miners. They're not happy with your decision. It was, a, it was a difficult decision because I think... A lot of pe- a lot of people do get claustrophobic. I'm probably one of the few people who has the opposite of that. You could say claustrophilic. I get I get quite. Ha- I get do you mean Do you mean agrophobic? Yeah, I do. And I just feel sorry for all those poor agrophobic people that can't uh, can't go to the top of the mountains. I just think the mountains is that the we've we've had a similar argument before about the one that's glorified more. You get all these chalets on mountains because they've been just because one day someone decided, yeah, if I strap these bits of wood to my feet and then I can go down this really tall hill and then I'm going to And think most people don't go for the skiing. They go to just sit in a log cabin and drink alcoholic hot chocolate in front of a fire. And it's the posh people's holiday where the poor people live in the slums underground. Just a, just another example of the elitist behaviours that you've proved over the last 19 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, the caves are just the pits, aren't they? Oh, I don't actually believe that. I just wanted to do the pun. I didn't get it, to be perfectly honest. I'm too busy looking up caving systems in and around Liverpool. Well, if you find any, I'd be interested to explore them. No, after you're not welcome. I, after, you're not after welcome. I've been up the mountain. On, on, be- <laughs> on behalf of all caves, caves. <laughs> you are no longer welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I forgot about. Oh, what about the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin? It's too late. Cool. Decisions we made. No, I know, I know, and I should know better after having done this. I couldn't expect to win both. I, I firmly believe that you only gave it to him just so I didn't win both of the first two questions I've ever been asked on this show. And the public agree. Let us know on Twitter. Did I let him? Did I let John win just to not let Matt win? Let us know well, what you think. I think I think there's only one way to discover that. I think we're going to change uh, change this format slightly, and we'll find out. I, I want to oh. I want to get in the ring a bit more often because I firmly believe I I did win both of those. And you're just making the point, so let's make make this a more regular thing, shall we? We can do. Are we subscribing to the theory of the enemy of my enemy is my friend? <laughs> so so why don't we do this we normally do three questions why don't we do three questions one question answer and the week after whoever won the round of questions the week before becomes the question master and let's do that for a, for a while and see see how that goes see if you get bored of bored of all the power and responsibility with great power comes great responsibility as Saul Spiderman once said Saul Spiderman Saw Spider-Man. It's like Dr. Spacherman. Exactly. Dr. Spaceman. So which of you wants to take over next week, wants to start this WJR 2.0? Well, I won two today. You've won one. John has won none. Sorry, mate. So we can either we can either be nice to him, or we can let me carry the crown for a week. I'm going to let you carry the crown for a week. Nice. You're running yourself for any points. This is this is setting you up good for next week. Oh, I know. I've had I've had a uh, nearly half a year's practice. <laughs> it, Who's expect, the least amount of a dick last episode? Oh, it, they can win an episode this week. Expect some uh, some chocolate in the post, some some cheesecake maybe before before the next episode's recorded. I'm not sending you both cheesecake through the post. No, I'm going to send it to you, so we can just. Oh. We can just we can keep the Quizmaster title out of John's hands for as long as possible if we want it. <laughs> <laughs> I think people are going to be aware it's going to it's going to be rigged. <laughs> no, no, no. It was. I I have to say, yeah, definitely. Um, 
the power was going to my head a little bit in and outside of the podcast. I was I was walking up to strangers in town. If then if they were having a disagreement, I was just announcing who'd won, and uh, <laughs> it's not a good not a good way to live my life. I was definitely walking a fine balance, being a fine tightrope. Well, I I don't know. Jeremy Carl seems to have made a career out of it. Yeah, but he was doing it on TV, not in Liverpool Town Centre. Isn't it the same thing? No, no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> coming from a guy that lives near Huntingdon um, that's that's the the one thing I tend to do a lot at work people go oh you just take the piss out of Liverpool because you're from somewhere posh and I go oh bless this accent does mask a lot about our hometown well I've been John and I'm going to go blow off some steam I've been John and I've got seven days to think of three questions you do the maths and I've been not John and I can't wait until they both regret this decision they've made. This has been Would John Rather. Look forward to next week for Would John Rather 2.0. Please join us. All the best. Cheerio. I mean, I don't know how accurate this is, but I can only work on the statistics given to me. The week that we choose not to publish an episode, our listener numbers skyrocket up. <laughs> So maybe we're more popular as silence. <laughs> Save them, baby.